Rub up your engines! Okay, so your car's air conditioning doesn't work right. Believe it or not, there's a lot of stuff you can actually fix yourself, as I'm going to show you. With mechanics charging you know, $100 to $150 an hour, there's a lot of stuff you can learn how to do yourself, and it's not as expensive as you might think. Now, let's say you're low on refrigerant. Yeah, you can get one of those little bottles at the auto parts store that you just added in. But in order to do that, you have to have a lot of experience and do a lot of research. Pressure gauges that come on those little bottles aren't as fancy as the gauge that I have here. They just have the low side pressure. You really need the low side pressure and the high side pressure to get a correct reading, and even then. See on my phone, not only do you have to know the ambient temperature to see what the correct pressure should be, because it's affected by a ambient temperature outside, but also, as you can see on the next page, you also need HR, the relative humidity. You get a little humidity to see what the pressure is going to be. So filling your car with refrigerant, if you're going by pressure alone, is a very complex task. But all AC systems have one thing in common that's exactly the same, regardless of the temperature or the humidity outside, so you don't need the stupid charts in the first place. So you got 480 grams. Now, if you take all the refrigerant out, all you have to do is put 480 grams back in and the system is full exactly. You don't have to mess with the pressure. Now, as a professional mechanic, I got a big expensive professional scale. I use a 30 pound canister of refrigerant. This works just as well. You can do it yourself for a fraction of the cost. I bought this postage scale just to prove it. Cost 20 something bucks. You turn it on, and it weighs grams. So you get your refrigerant can, you put it on a scale. In this case, it's 586 grams. You watch that scale. And when it goes down 480 grams, since this thing takes 480 grams, it's full. Now, unfortunately, you're going to have to use more than one can in this because this weighs the whole thing, the can, everything, and the refrigerant. The only thing that's coming out is the refrigerant. As you can see on the can, it's got 340 grams in it. This will lose 340 grams in it, right? You put that in. Then you get another can and you put enough in so the total is 480. So the next can, if this one actually does have 340 grams, maybe it doesn't. We'll find out when it empties out, right? But if it really has 340 grams, that means you'd only add 140 grams from the next can and you will have the right amount then. If you're near one of those auto parts stores like I used to be in Houston, it was an auto zone, they will loan you the gauges. They'll even loan you a vacuum pump to suck all the refrigerant out with. But if you aren't near one of those, don't feel sorry for yourself. This particular one came from a company called Auto Wanderer. This whole setup was 48 bucks. It'll last you a lifetime. If you're not a professional, you're not going to use it once in a while unless you're going to do your friends. Maybe you'll turn into an AC technician. I don't know. But it works perfectly fine, and it was only 48 bucks. Now, the only thing you have to know is what kind of refrigerant you have. And the label again says, as you can see, it says HFC-134A. And as you can see, that's what's in this can. So this is the correct stuff. And this gauge setup is set up for 134A. Now, some of the newer cars use the new refrigerant. It's a bunch of BS. Oh, it doesn't ruin the ozone layer as much. The reason they made this was because it didn't ruin the ozone layer, but who knows? The new stuff is R1234YF. It's got a different name. It's a little bit different. It's also slightly flammable. So I like the old stuff. It's better. <laughs> it doesn't go up in flames, but the new stuff uses different gauges. So before you do anything, you got to know which gauge set to get. But again, don't be worried because that same company, Auto Wander, makes it for the 1234 YF. There's the gauge set, and it was 49 bucks too. Don't worry about putting the wrong one on if you made a mistake because the fittings only fit each one. They changed the fittings when they used to have R12 free on. When they went to 134A, like in this Toyota, the fittings are different. They'll only fit on this system. And they did the same thing for the 1234YF, refrigerant, the new one. It's got different fittings too, so you can't put them on wrong. And let's say you don't live near a place that'll rent you a vacuum pump. You can buy one. This is a solid metal one. I bought it on Amazon. It was like 60 bucks. Mechanics are charging you 100 to 150 bucks an hour. Buy one. You can even use it on your house if you want to learn how to work on your house. Same system. I like this gauge set because it's better than the cheap ones that just have low side and high side. It's got vacuum and add refrigerant. So we go to the back vacuum line. Just hook the end up to the vacuum pump. You'll see it's real easy. You just unscrew the cap. 
screw the vacuum line on. Then you get your low pressure line, which is the blue one, and hook it up to the low pressure line on the car. Now that's always the fat one. This is the low pressure line here, and you'll see that it snaps right on. There, snaps on tight. Then when you turn the vacuum pump on, you'll hear a pleasant hum. Then you go to the vacuum line, and you open it up. Open this to the left, they even tell us you open this that way. And as you're going to see, the vacuum gauge is going into a vacuum. You can see it's minus 30 pounds pressure. Now I started this car with an empty system. What I'm doing is I'm taking all the air out of the system. Because you can't have air. If you have air in your AC system, it'll screw the whole thing up. So, you evacuate the system for say 45 minutes. And what it's doing, sounds strange, but it's making the water vapor in the system, if there is any, evaporate. A vacuum makes it evaporate, and the pump, you can hear it sucking, it's sucking it, and the water vapor comes out of the hole here. So I advise doing this for about 45 minutes to get all the crap out of the system so you know it's completely empty. Now you notice one thing. I didn't hook up the high side, because if you're filling up a system, you don't have to mess with the high side. Putting it on the low side will evacuate the whole system out if you wait 45 minutes, so there won't be anything left. And here's the problem with high sides, especially on older vehicles. The low side might only be 30, 40 pounds. The high side can get up to 300 when it's hot. And if you take the cap off and hook this gauge up, just because it's an old system, when you're done, odds are that high side's gonna start leaking. I've seen that working on cars for 53 years. Do not touch the high side unless you have to. Cause if you hook up both sides, when the high side gets taken off with that pressure, the valve, which has been sitting there for years, in this case, 15 years, now it's going to start leaking, and all the leak you didn't have in the first place. So, leave the high side off, unless you're doing an analysis, which you really got to have a lot of knowledge then. Let's say you fill your car with the fridge and it still doesn't work right, well then you got to hook up both gauges and do a bunch of analysis. It's relatively complex, but... In this case, you're just adding refrigerant, you can leave the high side alone, suck it out on the low side, because the low side, like I say, is such low pressure, generally they won't leak. But sometimes when you're done and you take off the low side to put the cap back on, you put your finger in, it's hissing out, yeah, you're going to have to start all over and replace the valve because it wrecked the valve. But normally that's a low pressure valve and it won't leak. So leave the high pressure valve alone if you're just adding refrigerant. After it's evacuated, you got to add refrigerant, right? Now, there's two different kinds of cans you can buy. You're not going to buy a 30-pound can. You need a license for that. But you can buy these small cans. If you get a fancy one like this, as a screw top. The screw top, there's the adapter that has the screw in it. You just screw it on, turn it down to break the seal, open it, and then the pressure will go in. Now, some of the cans don't have that screw. They're just an open can, kind of like an old beer can. Well, in that case, you use this adapter that screws in flush to the can. And it works the same way. You close it. And the little needle punches a hole. Then when you take it off, it doesn't. But you gotta find most cans are like this because by law they don't want them to leak, so there's a little valve in here. So when you're done, this one won't leak. Where the older style ones, before they had beer top pops, when you had to have a can open and open a beer when I was young, right? You're probably gonna find one of these. But don't worry about buying any parts. Because the $49 set I just showed you, hey, it comes with all these adapters. Just make sure you get a kit like that that has all the adapters. Most of them are gonna have the screw on one, so you're gonna use the one that screws on. It's an anti-pollution thing, they don't want to leak, so you buy the cans with the screw on ones, you use this adapter. And again, I like the stage set because it's got its own add refrigerant. It's turned off now. And you'll notice down here, that brass part screws off. You don't even want to get a little bit of air in the system. So once you open this can, the refrigerant comes through here, right into the gauge set. But you don't want to get air in the system. So once you open it up, you push the little valve. It's a bicycle valve. You push it a little, and then sh out comes the air just for a second. So you don't get any air in the system. Kind of amazing. 49 bucks, you get a set that has all the stuff on it. But that's all you need. You don't need anything fancy. Then with your refrigerant, Sitting on the scale, you start the car and turn on the AC. It's going to take all the refrigerant out of that can, which should be about 340 grams. When that's gone, you put another can on. And always watch the cans, because if you look, this one weighs a little different. It's 602. If you remember, the other one weighed 586 grams. They do not fill these cans that accurately. That's why you want to use a little scale. But what the heck? A little postage scale works fine. That thing weighs up to 50 pounds. 
So weighing a little thing like this is nothing. Doesn't strain it at all. Since we already put in 340, once 140 grams comes off, we just shut the valve off. We shut it off. And what do we have here? It's gone down to 42 degrees. That's nice and cold. It'll fluctuate a little here. Now it's 41. 42 that's nice and cold now you've actually done it like a pro if you guess with a pressure gauge like i said you got to have a lot of knowledge who knows might not be perfect there might be a slight flaw in the system and the pressures are going to look weird on the gauges and then you're going to be confused in this case you can't go wrong you suck it all out then you fill it up with a factory load. Then you know it's got the perfect amount of refrigerant in it. I have had more people bring me cars. The only thing wrong was didn't have the right amount of refrigerant. Either too little or too much. Too much is just as bad. It can blow the compressor up with too much pressure. Or you can have air in the system. This will get rid of all the simple problems. And you can do it yourself easy like I just showed you. Even if you got to buy the tools. You know, you're going to spend maybe a hundred something bucks. And when it came to the refrigerant, I just bought this at a local auto parts store. It was like 12 bucks. Simple to do. The other day, a guy came to me and said, Scotty, this guy wanted 500 bucks to fill my refrigerant system up. Don't waste money like that. You can easily do it yourself. AutoZone, they'll loan you the equipment. Even better. Then all you got to buy is the can that costs 12 bucks. But still, even if you got to buy the equipment, hey, the guy told me I wanted 500 bucks. So instead, you spend 100 bucks on equipment and you spend 12 bucks on the refrigerant, you're still way ahead of the game. Plus, and this is a big plus, you can't trust mechanics these days. They want to sell you stuff. I've had more people come to me, guys said, I need a compressor. I check it out. I do exactly what I did here. Then it works fine. A year later, they say it's still blown cold. Unless you don't trust yourself, learn how to do it yourself. You can see, it can be done. The stuff is readily available. The stickers on the car show you how much refrigerant to put in. Say yours fell off, you can look it up online to find out real easy. Simplest thing is to add refrigerant when it leaked out. They all leak to some extent. Now this particular car, it went 15 years before it needed any refrigerant. If you got a Honda, maybe you got to put it in once every four or five years. Maybe you got a tiny leak, you got to put it in once a year. What the heck? Learn how to do it yourself like this. You'll have ice cold air. You won't worry that you didn't put enough in or put too much in. And you'll be happy with 41 and a half degree air this summer. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.